Hi guys, I'm Adam McPhee and welcome to the Inside Word. I couldn't think of a better way to kick off the series than starting with club captain and current equal games holder for the club, Matthew Pavlich. Pav, welcome to the show. Thanks mate, pleasure to be here. Firstly, can you explain to the viewers what record you'll be breaking this weekend? Well, there's been enough uh, media <laughs> over the last few days. I would be surprised if they weren't aware of what record it was, but it's Shane Parker's games record. So uh, if I'm able to run out there this Saturday against the Coast, it'll be game 239. It'll break Shane's 238, which he's held for quite some time. So let's go back to where it all began. Your very first game for the club. What do you remember about the day? It was a night game uh, at the Wacker, round five in the year 2000. So. To be perfectly honest, I don't remember a huge amount about the actual day. Um, Mum and Dad and my sister came over for, for the, the game and, and that was great. And I guess just the, the moment of running out there onto the Wacker, um, you know, 30 odd thousand people and it just being a bit of a blur. Um, I think everyone's first game, there's a whole lot of nerves and everyone's a bit anxious about it. But to be able to, uh, I was lucky enough to kick two goals in my first two kicks um, and that sort of settled me down a little bit. And, um, we unfortunately lost the game, but it was it was certainly a great experience and one that I, 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 tra I treasure. It's been well documented, your first training session with yep. the club. Yep. It's fair to say you had a, a pretty big introduction into what AFL football was going to be for yourself. Yeah, mate, spot on. Um, it is well documented that I, I passed out on my first training session, uh, pushed myself to the point where I couldn't go anymore. Um, oh, look, I mean, I was, I was a young 17-year-old at that stage, underdone, and, and probably wasn't just a level of fitness which was AFL standard but uh, I wanted to impress and I wanted to give my all and after a, um, about an hour or so of skills training we did six 1k time trials which was pretty solid back then and um, yeah I got to a point where I, I couldn't go anymore and, and collapsed and ended up in the back of uh, Stephen Platt and Pat Watson's property van um, with Jeff Boyle I think the first words or the first thing I did with Jeff Boyle was uh, it's our physio I actually vomited on him <laughs> so uh, he keeps reminding me of that one but uh, yeah look I ended up sort of waking up or coming to in, in intensive care and sort of realising that uh, this AFL business is uh, a bit too hard for the moment but <laughs> thank god it's improved since then. After all the games that you've played it's just a bit ironic that we're yeah. going to be playing in Adelaide this weekend um, how many or how many family members do you expect that'll be at the game? Um, oh look, there'll be quite a few. Uh, given it's a Saturday afternoon game, uh, unfortunately there'll be a few people involved in their local sport um, back in Adelaide, so some cousins and other family that are involved in sport back there. But um, oh look, hopefully we'll get sort of about 15 to 20 um, family and friends there. I think the, the most important obviously people will be mum, dad, my sister and Lauren and they'll, they'll all be there. Uh, my nan, who's sort of in her mid-80s, will be there, so that's great. Uh, and then there'll be some other family and friends, but uh, it is quite ironic that after all these games that the record lands there. Sean McManus said that you played an absolute blinder for his last AFL game. He said that you made a very special effort for him. What do you expect of your teammates this week for you um, in playing your milestone game? Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't really expect anything else than what we normally expect each week and that's to, to play by uh, the standards and values that we set week in, week out. Um, you know, it'd be nice to win, but um, it's not nice to win for me, it's nice to win for the club. We need to uh, continue our winning ways this year. We're one and one obviously after the first two games and uh, to be two and one after Saturday afternoon would be great. It obviously will mean a little bit more um, for me given it's, it's a record breaking game, but. Um, I don't expect my teammates to do anything more than what we normally expect of them. When did you decide that AFL was going to be the sport that you were going to yeah. almost live? Uh, it's a good question. Probably probably not up until about the age of 16 or, or 17. I, I never really thought it was attainable, to be perfectly honest. It was always a, a dream and far. it seemed a far-reaching goal that I, I may not be able to achieve when I was younger. Um, growing up, like any other, you know, kid out there, I went to school, studied as best I could, um, played a variety of different sports and I think it probably wasn't until as I said about the age of 16 or 17 where I started to realise that um, I wasn't too bad at this and um, there was a bit of interest from some AFL clubs so um, yeah I, I'm like any other normal kid out there who enjoys their sport and enjoyed school and mucking around with their friends and was just fortunate enough to have a talent that uh, gave me a career. What are you looking forward to the most about this season? Um, I think 
again, continually to see our younger players blossom and grow in the way they play. To see them come out um, last year and, and play the way they did was, was really encouraging for me. And um, having been around for a long time and um, I guess been involved in some times where we probably haven't been as successful as we would have liked to have been, it was nice to see them come out and play the way that we know they can and um, to continually see our game plan evolve and, and become um, a really strong side is going to be important and that's the thing I'll enjoy most this year. I, I guess I've been around nearly as long as you and I've seen the game change a yeah. fair bit. What's your thoughts on 239 games in, how much the game has changed in the last decade? Well, it's hard to sort of pinpoint one or two things that have changed in the game. Um, you know, I guess aesthetically what you see out there on the ground as a spectator is that everyone's in, you know, a, one quadrant of the field basically the whole time following the ball. It's a bit like going and watching, you know, Auskick, you know, all the young kids running around just following the football. And essentially that's what AFL has become. Um, everyone trying to push up, create, um, a lot of numbers and congestion around the football so the opposition can't spread and, and move the ball quickly. So that's probably the first thing that as a supporter you'd notice the most. Um, but behind the closed doors, um, what we see day in day out is probably the professionalism, um, the amount of screening and um, things that you have to go through just to get out on the track. So um, yeah, there's medical, uh, physio, um, you know, yoga, uh, different recovery methods, uh, obviously all the training we do, uh, a lot more meeting time, analysis of the game, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, so uh, that, that extent, the, the stuff that the people probably don't see day in day out has gone to a whole new level and, and something that uh, has probably changed the most outside of the aesthetics of the game um, after being involved for 10 or 11 years. Totally agree. Okay, now a couple of quick questions. Yep. Who's been your hardest competitor? Um, it's a really tough question for me because I sort of played a variety of roles. So uh, I think playing as a defender, some of the, the very good forwards that I played on back in the day were Alistair Lynch, David Neitz, Warren Treadray. Um, as a midfielder, I played on, and a midfield defender, I played on James Hurd a few times. Um, and then going back and playing as a forward, which I have done obviously the last few years, um, you know, guys like Darren Glass, Ben Rutten, Mark Matthew Scarlett certainly stand out as, as very good players. So I've played on a variety of different guys over my 10 or 11 years and um, I think some of those guys are, have been right up there. Name the top three most inspiring teammates you've played with. It's a tough question because you, you play with a lot of inspiring guys. Um, I think Sean McManus um, for wearing his heart on his sleeve the whole time. and and I guess really embracing what Fremantle is about. I think uh, he certainly stands out. Um, I think Troy Cook and Peter Bell are probably two others, the way they played the game. Um, you know, never shirked an issue, went in 100 miles an hour the whole time. And uh, to play along those side, two guys, you knew what you were gonna get every week in terms of physical effort. So uh, certainly those three stand out for the moment. They mate that has taught you the most about the game, but not so much the game, but also living as an yeah. NFL footballer is probably I think uh, probably Shane Parker, to be honest, and it, I guess it seems quite apt to be able to, to share the record with him and, and hopefully break it this week in that um, the way he trained, the way he handled himself around the club uh, in an ultra-professional manner was something to, to behold. Um, he is highly regarded here and it was mainly because of his work ethic and his professionalism. The most memorable match? Um, the most memorable match. It's a really tough one. Um, I would say probably Short McManus is 200. Um, we won by a point. Luke Webster kicked the winning point with seconds to go against the Crows, ironically, who we play this week. So um, that was that was a great win and uh, a great moment for the club. If there's one thing that you want to, the Pavlidge name to be remembered for, what is it? Uh, someone who not only helped shape the club and uh, assist it in becoming a powerful AFL club, um, but leaving a legacy for the, for the players that are, uh, are here when I leave, so they understand um, very, very explicitly what it is to be an AFL player, both on and off the field. Now, I'm sure you've got a lot of people that you'd like to thank for helping you get this far. 
you want to name a couple of them? Oh, um, I guess firstly, sort of mum and dad and, and my sister and Lauren um, uh, are probably the, the four most crucial people in my life uh, and, and for different reasons, but all, all four of them certainly need uh, the first mention. Um, particular probably medical staff at the club who have been here for as long as I have in Jeff Boyle and Ken Withers and another one in Marshall Stockton who's probably been here for, uh, for quite some time as well. Those three in particular have been able to uh, get me up <laughs> um, when I've been sore and stiff and all that kind of stuff. So those three in particular and probably just all my, other, all my teammates and coaches that I had along the way have been really important. There you have it, that's our first episode of Inside Work with Matthew Pavlich. Um, it was very inspiring and I even take a little bit out of that because I haven't played my whole career with Matthew but uh, really enjoying playing alongside him. Okay, thanks for being on the show Matthew. Thanks mate. And Cheers. looking forward to playing with you this weekend. Thank you. Thanks mate.